everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering a day in the life of a senior information security engineer. This video is part of a mini series about like day in the life of all my cybersecurity jobs I've had throughout my career. This series was a request by a viewer, MD. You can check out his comment right here. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to be covering a day in the life of a senior information security engineer. And this particular job was at King County. I actually worked at King County two times. The first time was a senior information security engineer, which I'm going to be talking about in this video. And the second time I was a cybersecurity program manager doing vulnerability management. So before I get into the day to day, I'll kind of give a, a highish level overview of what the job was and like what I, I typically did. And then I'll kind of discuss my actual day to day operations at the end. So this job was like pretty odd because when I was originally applying for it, I had a I had like three interviews and the very like initial phone screening I had the person doing the phone screening, like wasn't my manager, by the way, but another person, um, they were screening me and they asked me like a bunch of questions about digital forensics, like digital forensics based questions about like data loss like write blockers and this kind of stuff. So I was like, Oh, I'm gonna am I gonna be doing some like digital forensics in this job or something. And I, I remember like, I specifically asked them like, Oh, like, what are the day to day duties of this job? Like, like, what am I going to be doing? And they said something about like participating in like litigation in court and stuff like that. So I was like, Oh, sweet, sounds like I'm gonna be like doing digital forensics, maybe like serving as like an expert witness or something like this. So I was like, Oh, that sounds cool. I guess I haven't done it before. But it sounds neat. But that was like, super, super far from like my actual actual day to day job what I like ended up doing in the position. Basically, what I did end up doing is a bunch of like security reviews for different projects and initiatives that were like happening at King County at the time. For example, say like a law enforcement agency, like one of the law enforcement agencies wanted to upgrade their inventory management system, and they wanted to like procure some kind of commercial off the shelf SaaS solution for this. So basically, like a whole project would be spun up for this endeavor, and it would have like different stages or different phase gates that might look something like this. It wasn't exactly like this, but it, it, it was really similar and this will serve as a good enough example. In a perfect world, like me and my department would get involved like some somewhere around the intake and construction phases of the project. So we could kind of determine the security requirements for the project based on like the type of information that the project would be storing and processing. And if the project was using some like commercial off the shelf solution, like or like some kind of SaaS solution, we would vet the in place security controls like the stuff that's like built into the solution, we would like vet those against the actual information that was going to be storing and processing and kind of making sure that the controls in place were like enough to adequately secure everything that the project was like storing or processing. We might do things like, especially if it's like a third party solution, we might do things like, you know, figure out where the SaaS solution was being stored, like what data center, for example, is it is it in Azure or AWS or is it in like their own data center? And if it is like, do they have like, like SOC 2 type 2 report that we can look at? Or if it's in some other random janky one, do they, does that random data center or have like a SOC report we can look at. I try to get evidence of like ongoing vulnerability assessments and remediation, like depending on the type of data that was storing, maybe I'd try to get attestation of like a pen test and like the results of the pen test, like kind of these like general vendor management type things. If it wasn't a SaaS solution that the project was trying to implement, like if it was something like built in house, I would kind of do the same thing. We use cybersecurity framework. So if it's like an in house, like custom project, I would kind of, you know, take their plan of what they wanted to build and like try to figure out what kind of data was being stored and processed if the solution like handled any kind of special data like cardholder data or electronic protected health information or anything like this make sure the appropriate controls are like actually being built into the solution from the beginning just this kind of thing and then ideally a lot of that would happen before this like architecture review phase here and then what happens like the at the architecture review like a lot of the stakeholders get together like the project like the project manager maybe the tech lead and some other stakeholders and, and then like some members of the security like myself would get together an architecture review and then just kind of review everything review the architecture of like what's intended to be implemented. And at this point, like, ideally, like I should have a pretty good idea of the architecture and like everyone else should too. At this point, we this is just kind of like a, uh, like a, a gate that we have to all all like come together and like agree that it looks good before like kind of moving on to the next gate. So I, I spent a lot of time in these like architecture review meetings where we'd kind of look at the project, like I said, make sure everything like looks like what we discussed. And then if everyone agrees, it's fine, we kind of like mark it off. And then the project kind of continues to the next gate or continues to the next phase. And then in between the architecture review and like the final check, the solution is like kind of built out or implemented and, and kind of made live, but not not necessarily made live. It's like made available, but it's not like totally like put into production. And at that point, like maybe 
I will work with the project manager on like the tech lead and I'll go in and kind of make sure that all the controls that we talked about are like actually in place. You can kind of think about it as like, like an audit perhaps. Like if I looked at a solution and I was like, okay, we need to have like more granular like access control or something, or we need to have like multi-factor authentication or something like this. And then we kind of agreed upon that, like in between the architecture review and the final check, I'd work together and like make sure MFA was like actually in place and like make sure the access control requirements were implemented before kind of getting to the final check phase. And then ideally, again, in like a perfect world, we like the project would like receive sign off from me or, you know, somebody else on my team. And, you know, at the final check meeting, like everyone would come together and meet again. And we would like review everyone's check off. And like, if everyone's satisfied, then the project can like essentially go live. That's like what I did with like 90% of my time, I would say it's just like a bunch of security reviews. And like, as you can imagine, like the security reviews, like kind of take a while. It's not like it gets done in like a week or something like some of these like take like a year or like a long pretty long time so they tend to like stack up so i'll have like you know a bunch of projects like in flight like on my plate where i'm like the assigned security analyst or the assigned security engineer for the project um that i would kind of have to not manage but i would have to you know, make sure to do my part for the different phases. So make sure, like everything was like taken care of by the time like the actual phase meeting came where we could like move on to the next stage. So that's that's pretty much basically what my day today was. Maybe uh, imagine I have like 10 projects, for example, and then maybe I'm using, using like Azure DevOps or Teams to track the projects. I might have something like meet up with Jimmy tomorrow to check on the access control implementation or meet up with Janet next week at 2 p.m. to check on the MFA implementation for this project or something like this. Or I might have like an architecture review meeting or sometimes we wouldn't, I wouldn't even have like these full blown projects. Sometimes somebody would, they would just like want to get input. Like they wanted to do like a tiny like initiative or something in their department and they just wanted like a quick security assessment done. And so I would do that sometimes as well. So yeah, pretty much day to day, just kind of dealing with this like project pipeline for like any given number of projects at, at any given time. And one of the reasons I ended up leaving this job, like if we look at this project pipeline here, like a lot of times, like I I'll say more often than not, honestly, like I would get an email for like an architecture review meeting and it would be like, you know, that day at like 3 p.m. or the next day or something. And it would be for like a project that I've never seen before, or like heard of or like anything like this. And like usually like in ideally I will have I will have had access to like the project and like the documentation and stuff like well before the architecture meeting, because like what how how can we how can I go to like an architecture meeting like the very next day when I've never had a chance to like look at the project at all and I'm, and, I'm, I'm a, and I'm expected to like go to the meeting and like sign off for the security architecture portion of it like a lot of these projects they would have like security things like put in them but it would just be stuff like the tech leader like the PM just like threw in there and I, I have never like seen the project before or, like had any chance to review it and this happened like so many times and it's not supposed to be that way we're supposed to be involved from like the very beginning like maybe like right after intake or something so we can be involved in like the construction phase and like we could build security into it but I don't know like like how this kept happening for like months and months and months and I just got kind of I just got tired of it to be honest and I'm like what am I doing and I'd have to like you know let the project go and maybe give it them like a contingent pass and like come back around to fix it but like a lot of the time like people wouldn't want to cooperate or they wouldn't want to like implement the things you're supposed to do and like they would just like circumvent security all the time this probably is like really uh really familiar to people who are like already in the field but I at some point I just feel like okay like what what am I doing here and I just like ended up quitting that was wasn't like that was one of the reasons that I ended up quitting there's like you know in my opinion like some systemic problems in this organization that I just like couldn't deal with but um, I just kind of felt you know in spite of like my best efforts uh, my I was just being like circumvent circumvented too much and I'm like really really easy to work with to be honest like if, if given the chance I will make everything like as easy as possible for the PM and like the tech lead and like everyone who I'm working with because like I know I know the PM wants to like move forward with the project and they don't want to be blocked and like you know their KPIs and their metrics are based on like their performance and like not being late and this kind of stuff and I'll do like whatever I can to make the project to go like as smoothly as possible but like people just like circumvent security all the time and I'm like oh my god and we would get to like final check sometimes or like art and I just get like sick of it sometimes and I'd be like no and I'm like I'm like you can't go unless you like do x y and z and then it would cause like problems and it's just like really troublesome I don't know I feel like I'm like the easiest possible security person to work with because I'm not like a hard ass uh, but anyway I'm digressing a little bit too much so that was pretty much pretty much my day-to-day
day uh, as a security engineer. And there's like a lot of different kind of security engineers. Like if you can imagine like working in a SOC, I'm probably going to be building out security tools and like designing solutions, kind of like in this senior information security analyst job. But this security engineer position was more of like a governance risk and compliance security engineer where I did like security engineering for solutions and security re reviews and that type of thing. And for those of you who kind of like listened to what I did in my day to day job, and you're thinking to yourself, like, that sounds easy, like I could do that, like, you're absolutely right, it is pretty easy, like, as long as you understand, like, really basic things about security, you know, the, the three tenants or the three pillars of security, like CIA triad, and you're familiar with like NIST, you know, 853 or the cybersecurity framework, and like those basic things, from a technical standpoint, the job is like pretty easy, to be honest, and I feel like, like, not anyone, but you know, most people, most people could do it. And it's probably, you know, pretty easy. Uh, the the more the difficult part of it is more of like the the dealing with like humans and dealing with like the frustration of not being able to like get results in that type of thing. Because like, if you're the if you're the type of person to have been able to like build your portfolio up enough and like be able to like interview well enough to like find yourself sitting in this job, you're probably like goal oriented and results oriented. And so just like sitting in the job and like getting by like probably won't be enough for you if you're the type of person who can get this kind of job if that makes sense like because i know a lot of people are like well josh why don't you just like who cares you're making like 115k can't you just like sit around and get your money but like you'll understand like you know if you when you put forth like x amount of effort and to like build yourself up and like do all this stuff to like you know get as good as you can then you get like put somewhere where you you just merely like existing and getting money you probably won't be satisfied with it at that point um, it'll make sense. It'll make sense like once you find yourself sitting there, I guess. I don't really know like what I can say. I don't know. Maybe I'm whining. Who knows? But it just gets kind of like frustrating uh, after a while. It, it gets frustrating like not seeing results and like people like doing weird stuff that they're not supposed to be doing. I'm just like, come on. And it leads me to like, you know, get tired and like quit. I don't know. It's just my random useless thoughts. If you watched this far, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. If you found this like useful or informative at all, please like and then consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it a lot. Super appreciate it. Thank you so much to all my patrons really really appreciate your support and then everybody else thank you so much for watching this far again i read and respond to like everybody's comments you have, if you have any comments or questions or criticism or you want me to like dive deeper on any particular points of this job like please let me know in the comment section otherwise i will see you in the next video Bye bye